guys welcome back to another sketchbook tour that's right i've got another one for you this one is my sketchbook from november 2020 to 2021 i'm so excited so this is actually a strathmore mixed media soft cover sketchbook this is my first time having one of these as my main sketchbook and i love it the cover is like very soft so you can kind of see there's some dents and stuff on there if you see the light yeah and I only put one sticker on this. Normally I cover them or draw on the front cover completely, but um, because of the material, I've just kind of left it as is. Let's have a look, shall we? So starting in, in the front, what I always, always do is um, I put when I started the sketchbook and when I finished it. When I say always, I mean, that's been a practice of the last like four years since I've been keeping track of my sketchbooks. I've got a bunch of stickers here. Some of them are from different artists. Um, that one's from Sticker App. And, and then these couple here are some of my recent stickers I put in there. The first page here is actually just like a very freehand gouache piece that I did. Um, I wanted to make the first page nice and colorful. It was actually my first time using this gouache. I actually bought for my birthday last year um, a massive thing of Arteza gouache. Um, and again, some more gouache pieces. Over here, I just was playing around with the colors and some leaves and I painted my new camera, which I'm filming on right now. I actually got this one year ago. So yeah, did that, did a little landscape study. I actually had the intention of doing a lot of gouache in this because it is a mixed media sketchbook. It's got nice thick paper, but I actually didn't do as much as I thought. I got a couple of sketches here that turned into some digital stickers, which I've just kind of put next to it. I like seeing, you know, how the sketch starts and then what it turns into. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, then I did, just a it's, it looks kind of dirty now actually <laughs> this sketchbook has been through a lot in this year um i actually did a swatch of all the arteza gouache which i love so much i think they're pretty good for that student quality cheaper gouache i didn't <laughs> wasn't expecting that one to be as bright and fluor as what it was i can't remember the name of it when i swatched it, i was like oh that's what color that is it's very bright but very cool i did some little gouache studies here again they were kind of haphazard um, I thought that looked cool. And then what I started to do is I wanted to make this a very much a scrapbooky, journaly type sketchbook on a lot of color and bits and pieces in there. And I always find a real struggle when I'm trying to start a sketchbook. I get a bit stuck on what to do. I get that new fresh sketchbook anxiety. Don't know if you get it too. Um, so I thought I'll just start with, you know, just bits and pieces. So I stuck in some notes, little birthday note from my best friend Casey. Um, and she actually made me like a little art supply box because I was saying that I really wish I could get, you know, a scroller box or something like that, but it's, I can't afford it. And also the shipping in Australia is quite a lot as well. So she actually made me a custom one and put a few things in that. And I thought that was so, so, so sweet. Um, again, next couple of pages, I just, you know, start off with some portraits because whenever I'm stuck on what to draw, tends to be portraits or like little critters. I definitely have massive art lean in this piece, um, which I realized like the desk I was drawing on, um, I just wasn't fully on top of it. Um, I stuck in some paper from this awesome Mexican and Japanese restaurant and drew some Posca stuff on there. A lot of stuck in bits and pieces in here, some ideas for stickers um, and some other bits that I've just done on bits of paper and I like sticking them in. I think that's such a good way to fill up your sketchbook is like when you have a space, stick a sticker in or like stick a receipt or, you know, little stickers that you've made. Oh, washi tape is good too. I end up putting some stamps in. I really love the US stamps. My God, like they're circular and they got these cute um, succulents and plants on them. We don't have stamps that are that pretty here in Australia, at least at the moment. Uh, this is a bit of like a whatever page, to be honest. I wasn't really focusing on making it look good just whatever sort of stuck in i like this this is on a different bit of paper with um copics which is very limited copics and i thought that actually came out pretty good it's for a mermaid sticker i was going to do I actually didn't end up turning her into a little sticker but i might in the future this little sticker that i did like ages ago and then these were the pens that i got and i thought i'd just add them there so I like these few next pages because this is actually part of the 50 portraits or heads challenge. So I did basically 10 sketches, um, portrait sketches a day for five days to do the 50 heads challenge. I thought that was a really good way to start 
in a sketchbook as well when I was struggling to get in the rhythm of using a sketchbook again because I didn't really, the previous 12 months, I didn't complete a sketchbook in that time. And I really want to improve and get back into drawing like portraits and characters and stuff, but I felt so rusty. So this was really good to get back into it. There's a bunch of references on Pinterest. There's a couple of pins, uh, a couple of Pinterest boards, which I'll probably link some and my one down below in the description if you are interested in doing it yourself. I highly recommend it. It's a pretty fun challenge. And if you want to, you can just do one sketch a day or five instead of 10. Like you can make it as much as a challenge for yourself as you want to. Like no one's judging you. <laughs> but I just think it's really good to get in that habit of doing stuff each day and um, looking at references. So these I feel I tried to sort of use the reference but it is very much still my style. It's not realistic. It's um, that bit of cartoony anime feel. Um, I don't think I can ever fully escape that but I'm okay with that. Some more heads. I wanted to make the page kind of a bit more flowy. I add some watercolor and gouache into it. I didn't want to spend too much time on these. That's why they still are sketches. I've seen some people do this and like every single one is like perfectly rendered and I just did not have time for that. Again, more sketches, I've, I've used color pencils, I've used pen, um, um, graphite, I've done different techniques. I'm trying to, as well as learn some new things. I like this page. It's kind of smudged quite a bit because I think that's with the Prismacolor Colorase pencils to love sketching in for under sketches that turn to inks and stuff like that. But this, this, faded quite a bit like you can see it's all smudged but I still really really love this page here I started to really falter and, and get stuck like I think that was from a statue some of these you can kind of tell like they're just a bit off but I like the hand on this one I I liked the feel of this and I like starting using the brush pen techniques and stuff like that so I did try to expand on adjusting the pencil sketches Got some more here. Um, again, different techniques in how I'd shade. I did some smudging and stuff here with graphite. I did some on tonal paper or tanned paper, which I really enjoyed. I think that's a really good way to practice either drawing from life or portraits because you have that mid-tone and then you add the, the darker tones and um, the highlights and stuff as well. So I think that if you're looking to start and you're really struggling, like maybe grab some toned paper. That'll be a good place to start. These I kind of did, I added some more stylized ones in here, like that wasn't really from a reference, I don't think. I think I just stuck something in there. I tried to do some males. I tend to obviously draw more feminine features and that's the characters I've always drawn, but I wanted to expand that. So I've drawn some more masculine people here and I like that these are starting to look a bit different as well. Like there's not a whole lot of the same face. I think I do tend to have a certain style in how I draw lips and eyes and stuff like that. But I'm trying to expand that and look at different marks and stuff you can do to represent, you know, facial features and stuff. This was again, a bit of a whatever page. I stuck in some instructions from an Ikea bookshelf we had. I kind of sketched out some Digimon, which I um, knew I was turning into a sticker sheet. So I tried to do some interesting poses for them. I still struggle drawing Digimon and Pokemon because of like how their features are shortened and stylized and stuff. Um, but I love them. So I tried to capture their essence and stay true to their design as much as possible. And there was a little um, 90s or early thousands, I think. Did you want to stick it there? Yeah. This again was a bit of a whatever page. I, when I say whatever page, I mean, I look at this and I feel like it's a bit of a waste for the quality of sketch. And I, and I hate that nothing in your sketchbook is a waste of paper or your time or materials, but I kind of held myself to a way too high standard with this because it, it's such a nice sketchbook. It's such nice thick paper. So the fact that this doesn't have paint on it makes me feel bad. But these were some of the early sketches for my cryptid series, which are enamel pins that are coming out on Kickstarter. Um, might already be out in my store by the time you see this, who knows? Um, check all my stuff down in the description if you're interested. But this was like the very start of it. So some of these have like evolved way past, like none of them really look like this anymore, except for maybe Mothman and Loch Ness Not Monster, but Jackalo, Jersey Devil, all that looks so different now. I like this page. This is a bit of a scrapbooky page. I've got some digital stickers that I did. These were like, oops, stickers. So they didn't turn out great. 
This was just a cute little plush toy that my partner got me. Um, I want to do like a bit of a textured sunset, which I probably should have done in acrylic, not gouache, but oh well. Um, and then I just wanted to do some um, <laughs> sketches inspired by Jacqueline Delion because I love, like I love the way she does faces and stuff, but it, looking at this looks so weird to me because like I'm trying too hard to draw characters like how she does and I, and I, I already have, as much as I hate to say it and admit it, I do have my established style. I have been drawing for a number of years now, so I've got my style and that'll gradually change, but it it just doesn't work when I try and make it look like other people's styles or adapt it. So, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, I love her artwork. Absolutely beautiful, very feminine and flowy. And I love that. And we've got some more here. These actually are more representative of like some of the final cute cryptids. I have it in another sketchbook as well, but these, these are pretty much like the final designs for these characters. I love, I don't know if you can see very well. I love the food dog one. I did a very front on symmetrical design for, for these and I think it worked really well. Um, the Kitsune one is nice too, so yeah. And then a, um, again, when I'm getting a bit stuck, I think it's good to stick in some bits and pieces. So this was packaging from um, another, <laughs> another burrito place um, in Glenelg in Adelaide and I love it so much. And some sketches I did on tonal paper that I'll often carry, if I don't have my sketchbook with me, I'll carry some kind of paper with me. Yeah, and these were just tickets from um, an arcade. They look pretty cute there. These were sketches of me trying to figure out a way to stylize and make cute <laughs> um, Godzilla. We saw Congress of Godzilla, that was like in March this year. And I thought they were cute. I haven't turned them into a sticker, but they're still here. The great thing about sketchbook is that all of these ideas and stuff are still there for you to go back to. And I have done that before. I've I picked up a sketchbook recently from like two years ago. I'm like, oh, I remember that sketch idea of this character. I really liked how I captured it there. I'm going to turn that into a sticker or a print. So definitely like, if you're not already, keep a sketchbook. It doesn't have to be amazing. You don't have to show it to anyone, but keep them and ha you'll have a chronicle of your art journey and your process and your thoughts. I think that's amazing. Like I've honestly loved since I've started keeping my sketchbooks um, probably the last couple of years and you can just stick stuff in like if you do digital art mainly put them in with your sketches compare them I think it's a great way yeah to record your process from Raya I really liked it um I just like adding adding the colors the watercolor there sketching that purple prism color pencil again this is a I'm stuck, so I'm gonna stick in a bunch of stuff. Paige, I think I did some sketches on the live stream that people were requesting. Um, it's Lizzie Gordon from The Sip, which I've started watching that podcast. Some <laughs> Easter egg papers, and then also a very sketchy picture of my friend Talia's Kitten Witch. She has an amazing account where she explores like mental health and, and things like that. So yeah, definitely check her out if you haven't seen her. I wanted to do some flowers because again, that's not something I've ever really got into, studying how to draw flowers. And I want to include more floral, I guess, like garnishes to some of my some of my pieces. So I just tried with some Copics here, and then I don't know, just some fruit and mushroom. I don't know, it's a bit of like free, free drawing. Like we just like blur onto the page and suck some other stuff in as well. This had some paper and I wanted to draw on top of it to have these like little motifs come through. There's a bit of lean with this picture, but I still think it's pretty cool. It's nice drawing on different textures. A little note from my partner. This idea for like a, a garden witch and I just painted in the background with some, you know, some more sketches. I think this is really at the point where I started to feel like it was a slog to finish this sketchbook. I just wasn't enjoying it. And, it, and it's kind of like, um, it's kind of how I am anyway. Like I really struggle to be consistent in a book. Like even having a diary for the year, I do struggle, but I, I do try as much as possible to finish the sketchbook. Sometimes I might have a side sketchbook or like a bad sketchbook, where, like a comfortable place where I can just do really bad sketches in, if that makes sense. I don't know, everyone has a different system that works for them. Um, but this this was like my main sketchbook. Um, I've got my washi tape designs here that I finished for my Halloween update this year. 
I've got orange and purple bat sprinkles, which I really love. And then um, my moods of Genga. I did these. I still haven't finished Biosmon and Impmon as stickers, but they will be. They are coming because they're my favorite. Um, I was doing some, this is where I was brainstorming the ideas. So I stuck that washi tape in there well after I did this. This is what I was trying to brainstorm, like what washi tape do I want to design? I wanted to do some dragon stuff for Patreon for this month. And I was like, yeah, this looks cool. And I was trying to just get dragon energy going. Um, and I did some thumbnails in a different sketchbook. I ended up scrapping it. I spent hours on it and just scrapped it. But that's the process, I guess. This is a pumpkin page. So I actually, this sticker here, I designed and sold last year for Halloween update. This was my freebie. Um, and then this is like a little tag, but I wasn't really happy with this. I guess I, I don't know. I don't know what about it, but I stuck it in and I tried to redraw and work out, okay, what did I like about it? It was a shave. It was kind of like the emotion. I wanted it to be, I don't know like not as soft as this and the pumpkins are quite round. So I did some pumpkin sketches to get the shape because in Australia, we don't really have these kinds of orange pump, like pump, orange pumpkins like this. We have like butternut and like different shapes. And yeah, so I wanted to get that classic orange American Halloween pumpkin. And yeah, so I actually did that. I still am not happy with it. So maybe like each year I'll just make a different trick or treat sticker. I don't know. And it will slowly grow. Um, these I stuck in my, I actually finished the sticker of these back here at the front. So we've got the sun and the moon witch with the sunflower and moonflower, which I thought were pretty cute. I've got them as my Patreon postcards as well, which will eventually be for sale at my store. The stickers are available as well. And I just started to draw some like witchy stuff. I just wanted to fill in the page, but you can sort of see that I'm struggling. Like I'm just not having the consistency, the clear voice that I normally have. This is some um, washi tape from Fox and Cactus. I stuck in, I just really like this texture. Like listen to that. Anyway, I stuck the, in this Pokemon card wrapping paper. I tried to draw some more dragons and a Rathalos there. That is heavily referenced from another person's fan art. I don't know the name, it just kind of came up and I couldn't find who it was. But normally I do try and write people's names when I, when I am like doing a study or something like that. But this was kind of like just off my phone. Yeah, so see, so I did a couple inspired some by some sketches from Siren. I tried to, you know, I think it's good to look at the artistry like and kind of go, okay, well, what about the art do I like that I wish I could implement in mine? And you can still sort of see like, I love the way she does her hands and her hair. And again, that very soft feminine type stuff. Um, and then some stuff from Lewish as well. Um, that one and that one mainly are. Uh, I think that was inspired by a Lewish one, but it kind of definitely evolved into more my style. This, I actually really love this page. It's not like perfect and I definitely need to do more studies, but this is like a Posca version of a strawberry. I was trying to break it down to like very simple planes of shadow and, and light. This was from when I went to do strawberry picking at Beerenberg Farm in South Australia. Really cute, really inspired by it. I wanted to do like a spread of just like the flowers. Got some footage of like bees and stuff. And yeah, I thought it was cute and I just little printed a little photo that was the wristband I had to wear and that was our little box of strawberries at the end of the day another spread this this side was inspired by a visit to um a lavender farm um and I had a cute bakery there lots of lavender inspired stuff I went to do this with Poscas but it came out so muddy and messy and I did realize I don't have many colors anyway this was yeah there was lots of marked butterflies there so I wanted to capture that I think going across to here is the next week where I actually went into the city, got some little treats there. I bought some new markers. Um, and then we went to, we had a night out in the city doing a pirate themed birthday party. It was my, mine and my friend Rishla's. Um, and then I just really liked how everyone dressed up. So I, I drew some people, that's myself, Danny and Rishla. Um, it was so cool just as a group dressing up with pirates. We went to a Caribbean bar, had some whiskey. And then one of our friends, I know, what happens I call him like Strom Clops, his name is Strom. And so I just, I drew that like based on a photo of him. I thought it was kind of fun. I just enjoyed doing that. And then here I got sent some markers from Artistro and I wanted to, so I just did the swatch there. I always do my swatches. Um, I found a lot of the colors. I normally like working in the purples and greens and stuff like that, but they were quite dark. 
So I was trying to think of a way to incorporate them. So I started on this side with just like a very sketchy portrait with that texture. And then I thought it'd be cool to add in the flowers as um, just like very bold poppy accents and then some see-through type shapes here. I liked that, wasn't happy with it. So I actually did this one here as well, where I did some, you know, just portraits based on the monotone um, sort of stuff. But the purple, I love purple, it's my favorite color. It was really dark to work with, but when you're using like Posca or Atristro like acrylic markers, you can go on top with pencil and then shade, like add more depth by shading. And I thought that was really cool. I like this. I definitely want to do more um, spreads where both pages kind of complement each other. Like here I've done that and here as well, instead of just trying to do, I guess like, I don't know, like one-off pages. Um, I think we better to, to start working in a sense where like the whole spread kind of makes sense or complements each other. So this is towards the very end of the book. I'd already stuck some stuff in. I kind of, when I have stuff to stick in, I'll just kind of go in and put it in randomly. And there was some stuff coming through on this side. So I actually drew on this separate bit of paper. Again, this the gold and the black is using those Artistro acrylic markers. I thought that was pretty cute. I might turn it into a print. It's like my patrons later on. I don't know. I just had the idea in my head wanted to get it out the cute washi tape and bits and pieces that it just kind of inspired me um and then i bought a big pack of sharpies because i know the sharpie challenge i've not done that yet some other bits and pieces kind of stuck in just filler stuff really and then towards the end here i've got you know what the sketchbook is little bits and pieces little like thank you cards this is another thank you card just got some stickers i stuck in the back here um bat the controller the deadpool of mine um and this pinup demon babe as well these two the truthless and light fury stickers are from casey meg she's an amazing artist please go check her out she's a tattoo artist as well in adelaide but she's been doing digital art for like forever <laughs> so yeah and then the back i left blank i didn't put any stickers on there but yeah that is that is the sketchbook my dudes Thank you for looking through this book with me. I hope you enjoyed the little sketchbook tour. It's it's a pretty short sketchbook I get, I guess, but I it took me a year to fill in as well as my other sketchbook. I when I flip through it, I kind of like the look of it. And I think in the end I did do a lot of growing and learning in this. And yeah, I just wish I did more gouache pieces in there, but I think overall it's a colorful little book. I have my next sketchbook is actually going to be a Lostrom book. So yeah, I think that'll be good. Probably do a bit more like texture and ink and stuff in there. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're working on a sketchbook right now, feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Um, I love being involved in the community. And yeah, I actually am doing a, uh, another video soon around like some tips and tricks on how to fill up your sketchbook so if you like that kind of content um, feel free to subscribe if you're not already but yeah i will see you next time until then keep drawing guys bye